Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in for another episode. I've gotten a lot of questions recently regarding suspended fish and what some of my favorite baits are to get those fish to bite. We all know that suspended fish a lot of times are in a lethargic mood, meaning they're not aggressive, they're not actively feeding. Uh, and generally, a lot of times when they do start to feed, you got to have bait that's nearby. Otherwise, they're just out there almost like they're sleeping at times. They're just kind of suspended, just sitting there, not doing much. And because of that, they can be very, very difficult fish to catch. And it makes your bait selection that much more critical. Now, there are a lot of baits that work for suspended fish. You can pretty much make almost any bait that's made work. The problem is a lot of those baits either will sink past the suspended fish, fall all the way to the bottom, or they tend to be too high. You know, anytime you're fishing around suspended fish, the real key is to keep your bait slightly above the fish. Keep it, you know, a couple of feet above where they're at. Generally speaking, that's going to be the biggest key in terms of getting them to bite. But knowing that is one of the keys to selecting the right baits. So it really comes down to create, uh, it's choosing baits that are you're going to be able to manage from a depth standpoint. Uh, a lot of people out there think you have to be using forward-facing sonar to catch suspended fish. That's not true at all. You can you can catch suspended fish uh, all day long, all year long without forward-facing sonar. Now I will say, if you have it, it can tend to give you an advantage. That's for sure. But don't think you have to have forward-facing sonar. To catch these fish on sus these suspended fish. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about some of these baits. A lot of really good quality baits that are out there, but one of the biggest similarities between them is they're all going to mimic bait fish. They're all going to mimic the shad or the forage that are in those lakes. So one of the best all-around baits, and this is no surprise, is a jerk bait. This is a Berkeley Stunna 112. This is the plus one model in the hanky panky color, one of my favorite colors. Uh, a jerk bait's just such a good bait because you can get it down, generally down to about 10 foot of water if you're running a deeper diving model. And then the bait suspends. It may slowly sink, it may slowly float, but the key here is you can keep it down suspended for the most part at the water column or right where those fish are at. So if the fish are a little bit higher up in the water column, a jerk bait is gonna be one of your best baits that, uh, that we see. And one of the reasons why a jerk bait works so well in cold water is because you have a good number of fish that are out suspended. I think a lot of times people just assume the fish are relating to the bottom, but in your cold water periods, a lot of times what happens is the fish will suspend out in the middle of nowhere, but they're only, you know, 10 foot of water or less below the surface. One of the reasons for that is the fish can absorb some sunlight, which is going to create warmth for them. And therefore they're actually higher up, almost like they're sunbathing. That's one of the reasons why a jerk bait can be such a good choice though, because you can get it down there. You're fishing relatively high up in the water column, just a really good bait. Next up is just your traditional fluke style bait. This is a, a jerk shad by Berkeley. Just a really good minnow imitating bait. One of the keys here is this bait just sinks so slowly. If you've got either very lightly weighted or non-weighted like this one, this bait just kind of glides through the water column. Now I will say for me, this is generally a bait that I like to throw when I know the fish are in 10 foot of water or less. Anything more than that, it can get hard to get this bait down to where the fish are at. But if you're looking for a natural presentation that gets a lot of strikes from these fish, you got to try a fluke style bait like this. Now, if the fish are deeper and I'm looking to get down to their range, so let's say they're 10 to 20 or, or even deeper, that's where I like to throw some bigger swim baits. So this is just a six inch D and E swim bait. I've got it on a core tackle, three quarter ounce, seven ot tush jig head. So the internally weighted jig head makes the bait still look a little bit smaller, but I can get this bait down to where those fish are at. So if they're suspending in 15, 20 foot of water, I can throw a heavier weighted swim bait like this, get it out there and retrieve it to roughly where the fish are at. Now, one key with that, if you don't have forward facing sonar, is to learn the fall rates of your bait. So in this case, this bait falls pretty quick. It falls a little bit faster than a foot a second. And therefore, if I know the fish are at roughly 
say 20 feet, I'll probably count it down for 10, 12 seconds to get this bait running in that 15 foot range. And then once it's down there, it's just a slow retrieve and I can keep it going. But this is an absolutely killer suspended fish bait. Doesn't have to be bigger ones either. If you've got some smaller swim baits, you can pick those up and start throwing them around too, like a little 3.3 Kitek. Uh, this has got another core tackle tush, 3 16 ounce, two hot head. The key here is a swim bait is just a really good bait at getting down to a depth and then slowly retrieving it at that same depth. One of the best baits for suspended fish by far. <clears throat> Next up, we're gonna touch on the hover strolling. This is the core tackle hover rig inside of a little Kitek Shad Impact four inch size bait dynamite for your suspended fish. So if you're throwing it out there and you know there's fish suspended at a certain depth, you can, you can pretty much throw it out, count it down to that depth, and then with just really slow retrieve, really slow shaking of your rod tip, the bait will actually walk the dog. So dart back and forth and stay at that correct depth. That's one of the keys to having a 90 degree jig hook slightly set back in your bait. Instead of it rising up, it'll actually kind of turn on its side and just dart back and forth and maintain the appropriate depth. Uh, we're definitely seeing hover strolling being one of the dominating tactics of the last couple of years. And it's really about targeting a lot of those suspended fish. So give this guy a try too if you're looking for, uh, if you're looking to catch some of those fish. The last thing I'm going to mention here is uh, probably the most dominating suspended fish bait out there. And that is simply your umbrella rigs like this schoolie rig by Picasso. You know, you want to make sure wherever you're fishing, you know what your state regulations are. In places like Wisconsin, I'm allowed three baits. Now that's a lot less than somebody say, I think North Carolina might be unlimited. So you can really put together some of these big rigs and have six, eight, 10, 12, even more baits if you want to throw it. But the key with an umbrella rig is it creates the idea of a bait ball. And like I said at the start of this video, a lot of those suspended fish will not become active until they see a big ball of shad. And you're recreating that big ball of shad with an umbrella rig. The bigger, the better, generally, but make sure you follow those state regulations. I'm going to be throwing on that, you know, from a hook standpoint, I'll just be using some of those core tackle tushes, the lighter weighted ones. And we are coming out with eighth ounce and 16th ounce specifically for umbrella rigs. Uh, I mean, you can throw them in a swim bait too, but the idea is they're made more for the umbrella rigs. Uh, so stay tuned with those, but I'd just be putting them on a little boot tail swim bait throwing it out there, counting it down to the depth where I know those fish are at, and then slow retrieving it, letting the bait do it. You might impart a few small twitches to get that undulation look with your umbrella rig, but ultimately that is probably the number one uh, suspended bass bait on the market right now. So give these baits a try. I'll put uh, links to uh, each of them at Tackle Warehouse. I'll put those in the video description for you. If you want to support the channel and you're looking to purchase one, please use those links because uh, we will get a little bit of the proceeds from that, which then goes right back into making video content for you. Otherwise, guys, let me know what other topics you'd like me to cover. I get a lot of really good suggestions, and a video like today's is from a viewer comment. So if you have specific videos you want me to do, put that in the, in the uh, comment section. Otherwise, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned, new video coming out tomorrow.